This is another QAZ WSX 2541 Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a basic game in Blender. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch the bottom to a logic editor. And we're going to do that by clicking on these little icons. Next thing we're going to do, top center of the screen, you'll see it says Blender Render. We're going to change that to Blender Game because we are making a game. So, next what we're going to do is we're going to drag this cube up by using the arrows. If you don't have the arrows, you can make them appear by clicking them here. Next thing we're going to do is gonna, we're going to hit Shift A and we're going to add a plane. So that will be our ground. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to drag out this side panel here and this will give us a few more options. We're going to go to the materials panel right here. We're going to add a new material with the plane selected. So we're going to change this to be green, kind of like grass. And there we go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select the cube by right clicking on it. And we're going to go to the physics tab here and we're going to switch this to dynamic. And that basically means that when we play the game, the cube will fall. We're going, then going to select Collision Bounds, and we're going to use Box, because it is a box. So, we can start the game by putting our mouse over the 3D view and hitting P. So there we've just started the game. Not very, uh, not, not much fun yet, because it's just a cube falling down onto a plane. And you can hit Escape to exit the game, just in case you're still in the game and watching this. So select the cube and we're gonna add a sensor sensors are all sorts of input devices such as keyboards which is what we're going to choose and the key we're gonna use is the W key and we're gonna turn on pulse mode which basically means that as long as you're holding W this keyboard this uh, sensor will be sending triggers through the controllers which we will add now controllers basically uh, change the signal that the keyboard sensors send out. So like here we have an AND controller, so if we had a couple of keyboard sensors wired into this, it would require all of them to be true. So we will just wire that across, and you do that by clicking on the dot and dragging it over to the other dot. And then we will add an actuator. An actuator is basically... Um, and actuators basically are actions. So they are output. So you can wire up this controller, and the actuator that we will be doing is a motion actuator. This will allow us to move the object. So the motion controller has a few options for allowing us to move the object around in the 3D space. And you'll notice that there are numbers in different columns. And there are three main columns. These columns are the different axis of motion. The first one is X which is the red arrow in the 3D view. The middle one is Y, which is the green arrow. And the far right one is the Z axis, which is up and down. So for W, we want to make the cube move forward. Granted, we don't have a very good way of telling which way is forward, so we will use the positive Y axis. So we do that by lock, which is location, and we will just put that up a little bit. And you can do that by clicking on the left side or the right side, or by clicking in the center and typing in a value yourself. I will go with 0 0.1. So we play the game. Whenever we hit the W key, it moves forward. Pretty simple, huh? Oh, and whenever you run off the edge of the plane, you fall. So then what we're going to do is we're going to add a few more options in. So we're going to do keyboard sensor. We're going to use A, pulse mode keyboard sensor D pulse mode keyboard sensor S pulse mode so that will be up down left right so next we're gonna add in three controllers and we're just gonna wire straight across like so and then we're gonna add I'm gonna do one at a time we're gonna add in the motion controllers so the first one since we did a will be a turn so this one will use the rotation box or the rotation row right here so we will want to rotate along the z-axis basically turning it and I will do five degrees 
Next, I'm going to click on this little L off to the side. The L turns on and off local coordinates. The local coordinates is the axis is based on the object, not by the world. These arrows that you see in the 3D view, those are based off of global coordinates. So these are Y axis on the global, X axis on the global, and Z axis on the global. So for instance, if I tilt this cube, the local Z axis is on the top is going from top to bottom on the cube whereas the global z axis is still going straight vertical in 3d space if that makes any sense so i will just hit control z next we're going to add another motion controller and this one will be rotating in the opposite direction so i'll put in negative five degrees and the final motion controller is going to be backing up so we will just simply do the opposite of what we did for going forward which is negative point one on the y-axis so now we go forward back left right so we now have a cube that can run around on top of a plane next I will be showing you how to add in pickups which are you know like coins so let's do that let's add a coin so do shift a we will add mesh torus that looks very coin like if we go to the left here, we have different properties for whenever we add in an object. So we can adjust the major radius, which I believe is the overall radius of the torus or ring. We can adjust the minor, which I think is the you know thickness of it, thickness of the donut. And we can adjust the amount of vertices that we use. Vertices are 3D points in objects, if you don't already know that. The more you have, the slower the game will run if you have a lot of them. So in games, it is a good idea to try to keep them as low as you can without, you know, suffering from graphics loss. So next, what we're going to do is with the ring selected, we're actually going to move it to a second layer by hitting the M key, and then we can select the second button there, and it disappears. That's because it went into the second layer. We have different layers in Blender, so we can view only the objects that we want, which is brilliant. So let's make this look a little more coin-like. So go to the Materials tab, add a new material. We will uh, make it yellow, which is a mixture between green and red. Next, we will add a Always Sensor, a AND Controller, and a Motion Actuator. So we will make it rotate 5 degrees on the local x-axis. So put in 5, and if we play the game, you see it spins around like every great coin pickup does. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a collision sensor. This can sense collisions with other objects. So we're going to type in, for the property field, we're going to type in player. I'm going to zoom in on that so you can see take note of the spelling and everything we're gonna add a AND controller and add a edit object actuator on the edit object actuator we can click on add object and switch that to end object so whenever it senses a collision with the player it will end itself so we can go back to the first layer hit shift hit shift A and we can add an empty grab this up above the plane a little ways and this is what's going to be used to add in our rings. So what we'll do is we're going to add an always sensor, add an and controller, and then we're going to add a edit object actuator. And this edit object actuator, we will leave at add object. And for the object, we will put in torus, which is the ring. So if we hit play, you see it adds a ring. Brilliant. So. Next, what we're going to do is make it so that whenever we hit the ring, it disappears. So select the player, add a game property, type in player. Spell it exactly the same as what's on the collision controller on the torus. That includes capitalization. So whenever we play and we hit the ring, it disappears. Now we aren't getting any score though. So we're going to add a collision sensor on the player, looking for the property ring add an and, act, AND controller and add a property actuator and now we're going to add in a score property to the cube 
and we're going to have this actuator add to the property score a value of 1. So every time we hit a ring, we will add 1 to our score. Now select the second layer again, select our ring, and we will add the property ring in here. And as of right now, it wouldn't work because we don't have any physics assigned to this ring. So what we need to do is go into the physics tab, turn on actor, collision bounds, and we will use a cylinder. So go back to the first layer, and whenever we play, you can't actually see that the score is going up. So a simple way to do this is turn on, is select the cube, turn on this little eye next to the score property, go up to game, and click on show debug properties. So now if we play, you see up in the top right there, it says score equals 0, 0.000. If we hit the ring, it goes up to 1.0000. So what we can do is we can duplicate these empties that spawn in the rings by hitting shift D and then dragging them around. So whenever we play, we get a bunch of rings and we can go around and eat them up. So next what we can do is we can make it so that whenever we get enough of the rings it will uh, end the game which could re be replaced later by going to the next level so what we do is we add a property sensor whenever the property score is equal to one two three four five six seven and controller and then we will do a game actuator and this game will be quick game now if we hit P and we go around and we collect all the rings, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it ends the game. And that is how to make a basic game in Blender. I will probably extend the series going a little more in depth and uh, making a cooler game, making a cooler, more complete game. Anyways, thank you very much for watching.